Now the position vector is here. You know velocity is given by the first derivative of the position vector, like so. Okay, and then that would give us, okay, product rule. Remember, it's a product, okay, you, R changes, R, if, sorry, I apologize, R is the scalar multiple, or in a way you can call it the magnitude of the mass of the sun to the earth. R changes, U R also changes as the point move. Product rule, be careful, okay, which we will write as R D U U R D theta, but differentiate it with respect to time, and then differentiate R with respect to theta, and keep U R like so. Okay, and now I must say this is where the goblet of algebraic differentiation comes in because we have to differentiate this monster of an expression right there. Okay, let me just check. Yes, okay. Now what we're going to do is that first, we were going to make a substitution, okay, as this one over here, R, U, R, we have it over here, right? Which is D, R, right, is D theta, D, T, and u theta okay so i'm just using this substitution over here to replace the one over there okay and then i plus dr d theta ur okay and then now we need to differentiate this why do i say it's a goblet because we got a product three products joined together product of three terms one two three now you can skip to the next part if you're not interested but i believe as as to make the proof complete i'm gonna do my best to differentiate that okay you can follow along with me which i hope you can now the step i'm gonna do i'm gonna differentiate the first one keep the two differentiate the sec second second one keep these two differentiate the third one keep the first two okay so differentiate dr dt okay dt d theta dt u theta okay first one is done plus keep the r differentiate so we got d2 theta dt squared and d u theta by itself plus keep the first two d theta dt differentiate u r okay with respect to t all right we're done over there now we need to take care of the second one which should be much easier for us because i will keep the first one okay or I differentiate the first one d squared r dt2 sorry d2r dt2 ur okay plus then keep dr dt and differentiate ur with respect to t there we go okay one heck of an expression but true true fate to perseverance we're gonna get to somewhere okay now what's the next step okay the next step is that i want to rearrange somehow okay sorry this is the velocity okay acceleration vector is here back this one goes differentiate okay correct acceleration vector is this thing over here like so now what is a smart step well if you will notice we got a u theta we got a u theta and we got a u r over here however we got first derivatives of u r over here with respect to time okay what a smart what is a smart step okay that's okay my apologies wait a correction okay yes this is theta over here okay i'm sorry differentiate u theta correct okay so we got u theta we got u theta we got u r but we got the first derivatives of u theta and u r with respect to time that is where these equations come in because it is smart to really eliminate the the first derivatives let's just see whether we can bring it to the the, the form which is like by itself okay so this one okay i will just erase it over here now this one is u theta differentiate u theta dt d, d u theta dt this one will be the one over here which is this one over there okay so basically we put a minus sign okay so so we times this one inside here this one becomes a square and we'll put a minus u r okay there that's good because now we got u r and u r we can match it up then we got a d u r d theta d time sorry dt and that one is the one over here okay which we can erase and replace as d theta dt and u theta okay now u theta u theta u theta u r and minus u r that's good so what is the logical next logic logic the, the next step is to really group the 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 unit vectors u theta and u r together okay now dr dt d theta dt and i got another one there so there'll be two so i'll write this one first which is r d2 theta dt2 okay then i'll plus a two dr dt dot with a d theta dt okay i'm just grouping the the u the u theta together u theta like that and then likewise i'm now going to group the ur together okay so what we got we got a uh, d2 r dt2 and then we will have to add up with a r d theta dt squared okay and this will give us ur 
And there we go. Okay, not bad. This is the acceleration vector. One heck of an expression. Never mind. That's what we got. So, what is the last step of in our preliminaries? Bear in mind, this is just preliminaries. Okay, we will use Newton's second law, which is the force is equal to m a. Okay, now the force we can resolve it. Remember, we define the coordinate axis like this. It's because now whatever force that is acting on the planet m, right, we can resolve it as one that is parallel to u r and perpendicular to u r or parallel to u theta. And what we do, we put f theta, which is the scalar multiple, okay, as like so, and we're gonna put f r and multiply the scalar multiple multiplied by u r over here. So I'm resolving the force, whatever force, okay, it's a general force, whatever force that is acting on the planet as two mutually perpendicular vectors, okay, such as now force is equal to f theta, which is a scalar multiple u theta vector plus with f r u r is a vector like this. So this is I'm resolving the force. Why do I do that? Because now I can equate this with this one over here. You see, now this one is gonna be equals to mass times acceleration, correct? Mass times acceleration is over here. I just times by an m. What I get, I got an m here, okay, and plus an m over here, like so. And then using simple vector algebra, I can relate to the two, or I can equate the two using this formula over here. That means this is going to equal to this thing over here. And what I do is that I just simply equate the component functions. U theta is here. U theta is represented by this thing over here. And U theta is represented by F theta. So F theta, bearing my scalar multiple, is equal to mass R D2 theta DT2 plus 2 dr d theta d theta dt u sorry dr dt d theta dt this is for the f theta and then the r f r scalar multiple again is equals to mass times d2 r dt2 plus r d theta dt squared and there we go these two are what we call if i'm not wrong the equations of motion And that is our preliminary section, if I can pronounce that correct. Now, why, why do I want to do that? Now, let's, let's see how that really assists us, okay? Now, it's saying that whatever force that's acting on, on the planet, okay, on the planet M, which in this case we take as Earth, okay, we can resolve it into two components, yeah? Okay, that components, it, it's fine because it's just following the coordinate axis. Remember, the coordinate axis is changing, okay, as the planet moves because we've got the theta over here, the theta's over here. So, in a way, everything is, is still quite right. Everything is still variable. We have not put any constants other than max, okay? We have not put any constants. So, these two equations really govern the motion of the planet as it goes around the orbit, okay? And, and that is good, that is good because now, I will just give you a small hint, okay, you can go think about it. Kepler's, oh sorry, Newton's second law states that the force, okay, sorry, the, the universal law of gravitation states that the force is directed to the planet, okay, so it's directed over here. Now, if the force is keep on directing towards the big M over here, that will mean that you can simply eliminate this force over here because this force is perpendicular and it will have a zero component because the force is always directed towards the, the mass, the big planet over here. And so that would also mean that this equation we will set it as zero, right? Yeah, and that is just the first step, okay, of finding Kepler's one of Kepler's laws, which we will carry on in the next video, okay? But some preliminaries, differentiation. I, I hope you enjoyed it, or, or I just wasted your time. But there we go, okay? Thanks.